Welcome back fellow guardians. Today, we're going over what is arguably one of the best, if not the best, new build for warlocks. Each one of you warlocks out there should have this build saved because your fire team is gonna thank you for carrying them through GMs, trials, raids, etc. Now when I'm saying carrying, I don't mean like super flashy and tons of high DPS, but this build is one of the first true support builds. I can see the LG post now. No one's even helping me with the planet mechanic. There was a mechanic? Did you know that big guy? Honestly, no. I don't even know why we wiped. With this build, you're going to be able to move around the battlefield, providing healing to both you and your team, tanking everything, continuously becoming cured, applying restoration, and becoming the best team support player in the entire game. Now let's get into the build. First, the base of this build is the new Warlock exotic, Speaker Sight and its exotic trait called the Lost Voice. Healing grenades spawn a restorative turret. Healing allies occasionally spawns an orb of power. Now on paper, this doesn't sound super strong, but when throwing your healing grenade, it places a small orb of light that will pulse healing seekers to nearby players, which applies restoration and cure. Now, the subclass here can be pretty interchangeable, depending on the content you're playing. Solar obviously has a lot of synergy and can really improve our healing output, but, you could also run Prismatic because you have access to healing grenades. You just won't have as much healing synergy for your team. You will have more variety and options to choose from, like Devour, Threadlings, and some of the other subclass turrets like Bleak Watcher. So the choice is really up to you. But for the sake of this video, we're going to break down the Solar version as the healing abilities are just so good and play into the theme of this build perfectly. For our super, we're going to either use Well of Radiance or the new Song of Flame super, depending on your encounter. If you're doing a lot of ad clear or something that you need to be more mobile, then I definitely use Song of Flame. But if your encounter involves a DPS phase or you and your team need to post up somewhere and hold a position, stick to Well. For PvP, you can run, honestly, whichever one you want. They're both pretty situational, but both are still very good. For our abilities, we're running the Healing Well to provide a space for us and our allies to rally and survive, but you could also use Phoenix Knife to give yourself that burst of healing if you're doing solo content, which yes, this build can absolutely work for running solo. I would switch up a fragment or two, but it works really well for either team play or by yourself. The melee can also be interchangeable here. Either the snap or the celestial fire work perfectly fine. And obviously, we're going to be running the healing grenade, as that is one of our biggest sources of healing. For our first aspect, we're going with Hellion, which is our new solar buddy. Each time you cast your healing rift or your phoenix dive, you'll get a small turret that can lob solar mortars that scorch targets. And for my testing, it only takes like two or three of these shots to ignite a target. I also found it was super helpful for building up damage on bigger targets while hiding or peeking in and out of cover. For our other aspect, Touch of Flame is an absolute must. Touch of Flame is going to improve the healing strength of our cure and restoration effects from the healing grenade. And because of our exotic, that healing turret is going to benefit from all of these improvements meaning your little seeking orbs that that turret fires are going to give you and your teammates restoration times two and cure. Okay, quick breakdown here. But restoration times one grants 35 HP per second, or 17 and a half per second inside of Crucible. At times two, that HP per second is increased to 50, or 25 in PvP. That is over the span of 10 seconds. This healing cannot be interrupted, so even if you're still taking damage, you will get that 50 HP every second for up to 10 seconds. If you either get hit by another orb from your turret, or you're able to apply restoration from another source, that 10 second timer just refreshes. We can extend that timer up to 15 seconds using one of our fragments, Ember of Solace. The rest of the fragments are as follows. Ember of Torches. Our powered melees are going to make us and nearby allies radiant, giving us a 25% weapon damage buff for 10 to 15 seconds. Ember of Searing, which will give us melee energy for defeating scorched targets, and it's also going to create a fire sprite. And fire sprites also grant a small amount of grenade energy. And lastly, Ember of Benevolence. This fragment is key to the entire build and what keeps the healing loop going because this fragment will give us increased grenade, 
melee, and class ability energy back after applying any of the three solar buffs, Restoration, Cure, or Radiant. Now the weapons for this build vary depending on how hard you want to lean into that medic fantasy or how aggressive of a playstyle you have. For you more aggressive players, and my preferred choice for PvP would be Red Death Reformed. This weapon was a monster in D1 and is quickly gaining popularity because this weapon is extremely strong in its new form. Red Death's exotic trait is called Redemption. Final blows with this weapon cure you and increase reload speed. Reloading after a final blow cures nearby allies. If you guys are anything like me, I have the worst habit of constantly reloading, even when I don't need to, just to make sure that before I go into my next gunfight, my mag is full. This gun will literally reward you and your team for playing exactly like that. And in a few weeks, the Catalyst will be released in the Season Pass, which is going to make this weapon's healing capabilities even stronger. The Catalyst comes with the perk Helping Hand, which states that final blows charge this weapon, and when the weapon is charged, the next final blow creates a healing burst at your location and leaves a remnant behind that provides restoration to allies. So it kind of sounds like after you've charged this weapon, your next kill will leave almost a mini healing grenade behind. We don't know if this is going to synergize with the speaker's sight helmet yet, but all in all, this weapon has an amazing synergy with the healing support class build just like this one. Now let's say you don't have an aggressive playstyle, or maybe you want to save your exotic slot for your heavy or your DPS weapon. You can switch to this, the new auto rifle from the Pale Heart, No Hesitation. This is a brand new weapon archetype that came with the final shape called a support frame. Flexible and agile frame capable of healing allies and hurting foes. Harming targets builds a restorative charge. Hip firing at allies while this weapon is charged heals them. With rapid healing, increases weapon damage and bestows restoration to your allies. It shoots pretty similar to like Osteostriga where the projectiles kind of track but they don't shoot as fast as normal bullets. This weapon was literally made to be a support class weapon, and it's craftable. Take a look at this perk pool. This weapon rolls with two new perks that I want to highlight. The first one is called Physic. Rapidly healing allies grants restoration to you and your allies. The other perk is called Circle of Life. Rapidly healing allies grants this weapon a period of increased damage. There's obviously some great synergy there, but I think the perks to look for here are definitely Physic to play right into our medic build, but also I think Demolitionist would work here as well because that's going to help keep our healing turret up more often. You could also go with Strategist, which is another new perk which grants class ability energy, and for the fourth column, Incandescent would be great here to help build up Scorch and get those fire sprites. You could also go with Circle of Life if you wanted to just add a little bit more DPS to your build. As for your other two weapons, the choice is really up to you guys, but some great options would be things like Dragon's Breath to put more Scorch on the field and generate more Fire Sprites, or any other Solar Heavy would work perfectly fine. Armor mods here are going to focus on orb creation and ability uptime, because the more we have our abilities up, the more healing we can do and the better we can keep our team alive. Solar slash Harmonic Siphon is going to be a big one here because our main weapon is Solar. Impact induction and heavy handed on our gloves for increased grenade and orb generation from our melee damage. Then on your boots, any combo of invigoration, innervation, or recuperation will work really well here, keeping you healed and keeping your abilities up as much as possible. Then on our class item, double bomber mods, again to keep our healing grenade up as much as possible. I also tossed in a reaper mod here, you know, because why not? And a few more mods to sweeten the deal from our artifact will be Elemental Siphon, which gives our kinetic weapons and weapons that match our super the ability to make more elemental pickups. Radiant Orbs, to basically keep a 25% weapon damage buff up at all times with the amount of orbs and fire sprites all over the place. And lastly, Shield Crush, which is going to recharge our grenade faster when we're radiant, which will be almost all of the time. So more grenades, more healing, and more weapon damage. Guys, if you're tired of your teammates or your blueberries on your team dying, then this is the build for you. You're going to have constant regen, constant healing, constant damage buffs, constant ability generation. Like, it's insane the amount of things that you're looping here. And it's not just your typical run and gun build either. It, like, gives you a purpose on your fire team. 
to that like most teams don't really have. You're the guy keeping everybody alive. Well guys, that's the build. If you have any tips on how to make this build even more potent, let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button for me, as well as the bell next to it to stay up to date with all my latest content. I'm still working on the lockdown build, for those of you who care, and I'm super proud of that one. It's taken a lot of work, and I'm still missing one piece. So hopefully next week, RNG will be on my side. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming and watching, but that's all for me for now. Wolf, out!